and we're going to welcome our next guests, who are Jan Skarbenek, Business Developer Manager, and Yiri Yanko, Solution Architect at Alvio. How, and who are we talking about improving the experience of your employees and making life easier for the IT team? So welcome both. Thank you for joining us today. It's great to have you with us. Hi, David. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for taking time of your busy schedules to actually watch our session. Uh, my name is Jan. I'm a business development manager here at Alvo, and I am joined by Yere Yanku, who's our solution architect and head of implementation. And uh, this is our first tool demo day, so we are very excited to be here. So maybe a couple of words about our company and our uh, background before we dive into the juicy part, into the demo. So we've been on the market for over 20 years now, and we've been delivering ITSM and item solution to uh, global companies. Uh, we've done over 1,000 implementations. Uh, some of the names you might recognize, Veolia, Erste, uh, or Škoda. Uh, our main focus is on like SMB, mid-market, commercial sphere, up to small enterprise. That's where we really shine. And uh, since the early days, we've been very much focused around Microsoft. So we really designed a solution for Microsoft infrastructure. And that translates into having a Microsoft who can feel that is familiar for your employees integrating into Outlook, Teams, Power BI, Intune, you name it. And it also runs on a, a Azure UK or Azure in your preferred location. So uh, most secure cloud out there. And we have, you know, all the certificates you'd expect for security, ITIL, Ping Verify. We are uh, most recently on a G Cloud version 13. And the beauty of Alvo is that we actually have two mature products. Uh, one is asset management, one is service desk. So one covers IT asset management and CFDB. The other covers uh, ITSM, but they are on one platform. They are uh, really two strong solutions on one platform. So that enables you to take advantage of some uh, synergies between these two tools, which reflects the synergies between these two processes as they happen in real life. So that's what I'm going to show actually later on. And before we uh, just go to the tool part, I just want to kind of give you an idea of what are the conversations we are having with our customers. So one of the things I, uh, and these are by the way from my uh, calls. So what I get to hear is, uh, for instance, we don't want our employees to learn a portal. Every hates interacting with service desk. It needs to be an easy process, which is a bit strong, I appreciate. Uh, the ITSM workflows are the same no matter the tool. Our employees don't care about ITSM. They just want to have issues fixed on a first call. And the last quote for you, we just moved fully to Microsoft 365. We want something that aligns with that. So our experience is that uh, there really needs to be that maturity for the IT team. Uh, there uh, needs to be you know, all your workflows, prioritization, everything that makes life easier for you. But at the same time, these days, your employees are used for top-notch experience from you know, Netflix, Spotify, Microsoft 365 and your uh, ITSM stack should actually reflect that. So uh, this is what we will show you. Uh, first thing, how ITSM and ITEM integrate uh, on one platform. A uh, Couple of channels how your employees can raise a ticket and our integration uh, to Outlook and Teams, and then uh, start to sleep as workflow. So let's uh, dive straight in. And uh, this is the product. So what you see now is the self-service portal, and hopefully straight away you can notice that Microsoft look and feel. Uh, it's not built on SharePoint, it's our application, it runs on Azure, uh, but uh, the look and feel is what uh, is familiar to your employees. So if they are used to use uh, Teams, Outlook, uh, they will just know how to navigate to our well. And then it, they can obviously write what is their issue and it then leads them to self-service. It offers them, you know, knowledge articles, fast requests, um, any news, and only then, you know, to raise a ticket. But the thing that I want to show you is this little neat section, uh, my assets, where you can actually preview entrusted assets to your employees and uh, let them see what you've entrusted to them. And you can actually uh, let them see any attributes that are relevant for them. So for instance, uh, SIM card number, uh, mobile tariff, or you know, warranty expiration. And you can go one step further and let them raise a ticket directly from the device. So this is just another channel how to raise a ticket. And if that happens, you know, that uh, device gets attached to the ticket. So in this case, you know, I've broken the glass of my Apple iPhone and just uh, as easy as this, I raise the ticket. So this was just a, just a little high level taste of the self-service portal. Uh, let's now switch to the agent view. So 
we can see that the, this is like working area of the agent. Uh, the subject of the ticket has been put together based on the form and the device and the user. And uh, I can now check what's the you know response time, uh, what's the workflow. Out of the box, you have all the ITIL workflows, and you can then adjust them to your needs. You can also you know see work instructions. Uh, if there's something that you don't do that often, you can just have that at hand. Uh, but the uh, interesting part again, where the synergies come into play, is that you can actually check the device. This relates to click into the IT asset management part and see all the attributes that are necessary. Now, uh, what this actually means. It means better user support because you don't have to ask them uh, what's your service tech, uh, what's your system. You know, uh, you can have it all uh, already at hand, and you shouldn't ask your employees the things that you already know. Uh, so you can just check for yourself. You can track any attribute, and you can also check any re other related incidents with this particular device. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples where this come in handy. First is let's say your employee files a ticket. My battery is overheating. So you go ahead, you change the battery, and then in a month after that, another ticket. My battery is overheating. So you can just see, well, we've changed the battery. Perhaps you should dig a bit deeper what's the root cause. And, uh, you know, it gives you some kind of information from diagnosis. But also, uh, this is the third time in the past month that they have been uh, complaining about their laptop. Maybe we just buy a new one and don't <laughs> try to even repair. Uh, and then uh, another thing that's uh, quite important when you are doing the uh, IT support is to know where everything is, who owns it. So uh, you don't want to be asking your employees again, where do I find you? Uh, you just want to know. So that's actually where this part comes in play. So you can just check the full, what we call IT asset tree. And IT asset tree, that's this little part uh, on the left. Uh, it's modeled after Active Directory. So if you've been working with Active Directory, this will be very, very familiar. And uh, this is the part where you structure uh, your organization, uh, you know, based on geographies, offices, building. Um, if you, for instance, some like NHS, uh, like healthcare customers that are uh, that are really appreciated that they can navigate through complex uh, buildings and you know infrastructure. Uh, so you know uh, where it is, and you can just ask James. Look, I know you are in A O five office. Do I find you there today? Uh, so having that uh, view where everything is, who owns it? Then uh, actually managing the full IT asset lifecycle. So you know from the stocking up to moving the uh, device, you know between owners to actually disposing of it. It's all done through that IT asset tree. And the way this comes in handy is like uh, twofold. One, uh, it's just better for our human brains to work this way than to work through spreadsheet view, kind of having glorified spreadsheet in a web browser. Uh, and it also it also helps you with uh, data quality. So you can see in here, like the user for this phone is James, and it's A O five office, it's IT department, and that's all taken from the asset tree. So uh, what we can do when we actually uh, give this phone uh, to Veronica, all these attributes get tracked from the asset tree. You don't have to uh, track them manually. You don't have to really change anything. It's all in there. So. You're going to take that phone, uh, give it back to James. And uh, another thing that you probably want to do if you are moving things around and actually entrusting assets to your employees is to print a handover protocol. So that can be done as well. And you can, uh, besides you know, IT stuff, you can track any configuration items, uh, anything that's uh, relevant for your IT stack, but also anything beyond IT. So you know, be it keys, uh, badges, and then you can actually uh, print the handover protocol, let it sign them, uh, via web, via paper, whatever is preferable, hopefully the green way. <laughs> and uh, this is really important, for instance, for starters leavers process again, because uh, very often when employees leave the company, they just return back laptop and they uh, they go away with all other things. And uh, the last thing, uh, everything is tracked. So you have this uh, full audit trail uh, of each object, uh, including you know, change of the attributes, printing the handle protocol, you can always come back for audit purposes or for diagnosis and see what happened to that device. So this was very high level view and uh, we will be just cherry picking on this presentation, but I would like to now hand this over to Iri. And if I can ask you, David, to actually allow Iri to share his screen and Iri will show us the Outlook integration. So uh, if you can just show us Iri uh, how we integrate with Outlook and what are the benefits of that. Okay, so 
even though like instant messaging is being used in business environment more and more, uh, I think we are all flooded with emails still. So this thing doesn't change much. So our Outlook Eden is here to help you with that. And to be honest, we are using Alvo internally. And for me personally, like my Outlook Eden is the like main, uh, my channel to work with Alvo actually, because I'm just working through my emails and doing the stuff I need with the tickets and just you know, go on. Okay, so the main idea is what you are seeing. So on the right side, you will see always the detail of the ticket. So in this case, this is a notification. This is a notification from a uh, from service desk. So on the right side, you will see a uh, specific ticket with all the audit trail and all the features or possibilities to do with the ticket based on your permissions. And in case someone writes you an email, sends you an email, and it's a user or vendor, so they don't use the ticket doesn't exist yet. Uh, you are we are showing you the relevant tickets based on the sender and based on your history. So we can just easily select specific ticket from there, save it there, update the ticket, maybe the owner is someone else and you will see directly the HTML formatting, like no information has been lost in the process. So this is one example of what to do. And the second one is I can actually easily create a new ticket uh, using the self-service or service catalog uh, where all the requests on incident types are so I can just trigger specific workflow by selecting by selecting the right uh, service so the ticket is created and maybe someone else was notified right now okay so that was the inbox and we are able to do the same in the calendar view so when you uh, select specific uh, event in your calendar you see the full context here and we are also able to you know create new event out of ticket on the right side. You are able to do this also from the web, app, applica web application, but you know the Outlook add-in is, is like in Outlook client, so this is what we are showing you. Okay, so that's for enough for me. So back to you. Yeah. Outlook add-in, like if you are tired of that switching between the apps, uh, that's one of the features that comes in quite handy. But we are actually seeing more and more companies are uh, moving onto. Teams as a main platform for communication. We have actually customers that are using Teams now more than Outlook. So uh, that means for us, absolutely, we need to integrate with Teams as well. So we are able to share tickets via Teams, raise tickets from Teams, start conversation from Teams. But what's important, you want to also allow your employees to actually use Teams as a channel to raise a ticket. So, you know, just give them an option. If you need IT support, uh, use this button in Teams and go raise a ticket. This is actually an area that is quite uh, quite dynamic for us because we are uh, we are changing it a bit and developing it together with Microsoft to match the way how they design teams. So there will be much more uh, features coming in the near future. But uh, the thing that's important is like it's becoming a prevalent channel and it's important to be able to communicate through teams while keeping that audit trail and keeping things simple for IT. So. Uh, there's been Teams integration. Uh, now, if you can tell us a bit about uh, status workflows, work, <laughs> status levers workflow, and uh, how we help there. Yeah, I think we are all, all familiar with uh, status levers process. I think it's quite com a complex process, but it shouldn't be difficult. So that's our idea. So you know, a lot of people, teams, or even departments are in involved in that. You know, new employee comes to the company and on day, day one, everything is ready and working and, you know, really can start to be a valuable part of your company. And this is actually like the first a gateway to our service desk from different uh, departments in the sense like being agents. So thanks to the licensing model, but Jan will, will tell you more about this. So how this looks in our in our tool. Like navigating through the self-service portal throughout the service catalog or being or even searching you you are selecting specific service with different workflows forms and triggering different uh, agent groups so you will select select all the necessary information or can be even loaded from hr system so, so this is just a really easy easy example this is actually part of the demo, demo database that is our like starting point for all our customers 
a bait and based on everything I have filled, master ticket is created and on the links tab, I will see all the, all the child tickets that have been created, assigned to different uh, groups and maybe even triggering automation, automation somewhere when, when possible, like creating the Active Directory account. So in our case, there could be like dozens of these tasks. So this is a really easy, easy example, but you know, you get the idea. So back to Jan. Uh, what I just want to see, like, what's the test part in that uh, ITSM tool set uh, landscape? Uh, are three things. First, we are very much Microsoft focused, Microsoft look and feel, Microsoft integrations. We have that uh, strong synergies between ITEM and uh, Service Desk because we actually started more than 20 years ago as an ITEM vendor. And uh, then the last thing that uh, wasn't mentioned is that we have a very convenient licensing model for uh, like ESM, like enterprise-wide use. So for instance, for that status levers workflow, where some people just do a couple of tasks uh, per month, you license the whole company and then anyone can be an agent. So if you are moving service desk to other departments, you don't need to pay anything extra with Alwell. So that really sums it up uh, for our, thank you for your time and for your attention. Thank you both. That's great. Thank thanks. You. Thanks a lot. Great. And and it's great to see you guys. I think we met in, in sets. I met the team in sets and um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and uh, let me just put myself on as well, actually. And and it was great to just to, to see the interest because a lot has changed, isn't it? As you as you guys have said, a lot has changed since COVID. And I think mm. that um and we've spoken on this this um this event as well previously about uh you know places like Teams or um, and Microsoft becoming a, a, a platform of services that people go to first. So integrating stuff with that sort of makes sense, you know. Um, I, I'm really interested, and in, again, um, I'm interested in 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 sort of the, the model that you're trying to create. Really, you know, the, the the focus with designing with Microsoft, for example. And I know that I think they've they I think they've got their own platform. I think it's Provence. I think I think it's Microsoft enabled platform. I think I'm not I'm not sure if it is or not. I can't. I, I don't think, I don't think this is directly Microsoft. I think that's uh, that's uh, another vendor actually. It's another. I see. I see. I see. So. When, when you're working with Microsoft and when you're designing for this stuff, how, if you've seen some of the other tools we've saw, some of the capabilities around drag and drop and configuration, how, how is, it, is it a similar thing to configure these things or is it slightly different because it's, it's, it's integrated, more integrated with, with, uh, with Microsoft 365 or Microsoft um, services? I'm going to let Yeri answer this question. So we are using uh, customer voice for in improving our products. This is quite an you know, advantage of smaller vendor than the big guys let's say uh and and you know integrating to microsoft technologies like the teams add-in and outlook add-in we have always communicated with microsoft to have their ideas and best practices what to do so we have aligned our roadmaps with them so we, we know what they are up to and actually you know i, I hope it, we are also part of their ecosystem right now like being mm -hmm. uh, like preferred uh, solutions maybe and so on. Uh, sorry, in terms of like configuration, uh, the main thing we are taking from the Microsoft world is there needs to be that ease of use. It doesn't doesn't need to be complicated, you know, to for it to be kind of mature. And then obviously, Power Apps is one of the things that uh, you know this codeless Power Apps approach that is going to shape the future. So we are having our eyes on that as well. Yeah, and that's great. And, and I'm assuming because I'm not, I'll be honest, I've not seen it, guys. I, I probably need to spend some more time using it and seeing it. So if you look at that, the, those those power apps, then I'm assuming there's there's some kind of marketplace that that, that will be available for um for, for users to 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 bring these kind of power apps into into the system. Is is would that be the case? It's actually more about uh, giving the uh, customers the ability to uh, plug via Power Apps into Alvo and just you know connect to their infrastructure uh, for any kind of automation that needs to go beyond uh, ITSM. Uh, you know, so this is the answer. Yeah, that's no, that's really cool. And 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 if you look at yourself and the rest of the market, how 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 have you since COVID nineteen? How how have you seen? The sort of you, when we we may touch on this in the Q and A, how we've seen sort of the user demand change in relation to you know this being a central a central thing now, a, the, the, a product that's harnessing the power of Microsoft in a, in a work environment. How how much sort of um, how how is the 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 position of of 
the people who buy these kinds of products change, the users, how much interest has it created? What, what are you sort of seeing in the market at, at the minute around that? Well, the, the biggest thing, and like there's another trend coming up, which might be the recession, it's going to take, you know, play a part as well. But since the COVID, the biggest thing has been obviously the shift to the remote workforce, like remote workspace. And uh, that means that the employees, they just need to have it really easy to contact the IT. You don't have that option to go and speak face to face. So uh, kind of using the channels that they started using, I think like for teams, the increase for just during the COVID was like tremendous. So giving them the ability to use those channels that they adopted uh, through COVID, that's actually what was nice for us. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, the market's the market. Things have changed. A lot of stuff has changed. Not only with with you know in this in this space, but other spaces as well. So it is. It's it's really interesting. I'm, I'm very keen to see um how, how user habits change. You know how how buyers, how the market changes in relation to uh, in relation well, to the next one couple of years. One of the things well. like I'm so sorry to catch you, uh, that's but okay. That's okay. one of the things that's uh, most interesting is the team stake up. So really, we have uh, we are speaking with companies that are like 90% communication going through Teams, mm -hmm. uh, which was like inimaginable in the past, and it's going to be shaped up further by like new generations coming into uh, workplace. So uh, that's definitely what we are keeping close eye on. Yeah, and, and it makes absolute sense. I think. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. -bye.